Tina Fey, and we've reached the stage in life where we'll only present awards sitting down. <laughs> Here are tonight's nominees for Outstanding Live Variety Special. The only show that's longer than when they aired Titanic with commercials on TBS, The Oscars. <laughs> Chris Rock, Selective Outrage. Uh, Chris could be here tonight, but if he wins, we'll accept on his behalf because we miss getting Emmys. <laughs> Elton John Live, farewell from Dodger Stadium, celebrating the best in musicals that were based on movies, which will probably be movies again. There's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely. <laughs> the 75th Annual Tony Awards. And the Emmy goes to Elton John Live, farewell. How about a little weekend update from Tina Fey, Amy Poehler? So good to see them I like on it. the Emmys. They looked great. They looked great. And Elton is now an EGOT. You know what an EGOT is? Is that the Oscar, the Emmy, the Gold Grammy, and the Tony? <laughs> yes. All right. He is an EGOT winner. And that was for, uh, which I need to see, by the way, the Elton John Farewell from Dodger Stadium. You know, I have to say, I thought the Emmys were brilliant. Did you notice that they brought back all these iconic TV shows yeah. throughout the night? And the pace was great. The energy was great. The The mood was great. It really brought back a lot of nostalgia. You just remember how much you miss, like, The Sopranos. You know, when all of a sudden there's Lorraine Bracco and Christopher Imperioli standing there. And then they bring out the cast of Cheers, that was insane. They're doing the nostalgia play, which is working universally. All in the family. Yeah, that was Rob Reiner. Ally McBeal. John Hamm comes out, of course, as Dom Draper. Here was the huge surprise from everyone, Grey's Anatomy and Katherine Heigl. Because yeah. remember, she sort of left the show with some controversy, yeah. and there she was. Hollywood didn't like her in some areas of it, I think, for a while. But I love the fact that they brought back all these iconic shows. Dylan McDermott stepped out from American Horror Story, the cast of Martin. It was really good. And I knew you would know this, that Succession dominated all over again. Man, there's talk now of a Succession movie possibility. You know, they probably should do that. And some of the people have already said that they would do it. And I don't know how that would work, seeing as, you know, dad is dead. They'll they'll do a prequel. quote unquote prequel. Yeah. Or something. Uh, other, you know, obviously beef was a big winner. The bear, big winners, a lot of predictability. But it was good to see them all sort of cheering each other on. You know who I thought did a great job as the host was Anthony Anderson. Yeah, he did. He kept the pace going and it was very funny in the very beginning, as he was, you know, giving a nod to some old T V shows, all of a sudden Travis Barker on stage playing drums. Where, where'd that come from? Pretty cool. That was insane. And then, yeah, Anthony Anderson's mom, she was the one that was going to make sure you wrapped it up on your speeches. We do what's called playoff music, which everyone tends to ignore. This year, I've got something that nobody can ignore. My mama. <laughs> now, tonight, my mama... Tonight, my mama, she is going to be the Emmy's playoff mama. Now, when you see my mama coming, just thank Jesus and your family and wrap it up. And I don't want nobody to get disrespectful with my mama because my mama is from the west side of Chicago and she can throw them hands. Shut up. That's enough. Mama, I want to go to the after party. Hurry up. Okay, my mama. All right, you're supposed to be yelling at the other people, not at me, not in the middle of the monologue. The, the time's up, baby. <laughs> Cut to the chase. All right. See what I mean? My mama don't play. Well, you've all been warned. Very good stuff. A couple of historical moments. Quinta Brunson is the first black comedy lead actress winner in more than 40 years for Abbott Elementary. You know, that's a show that I never got into. Now I'm thinking I need to go back and watch it. Never, ever. And it gets a lot of love. And uh, Ali Wong really liked her in Beef. She also, uh, that was another historical moment. She became the first Asian woman to win an Emmy for a lead role. Congratulations, Ali Wong. I do have to say, Barnes, sometimes you watch these 
award shows and you you know, maybe I should have gone back and watched that. Guess what I'm saying that about now? What? Succession. I never finished it. Oh, that's right. How did you not? Wh- why just, would you bail on that? Remember, we, we talked about that. I couldn't really rally around anyone. So now I want to go back and watch it. And, and by the way, two great speeches from Kieran Culkin, you know, because he won Golden Globe. He won yeah. Emmys last night. Great speech. Gets choked up talking about his mom, too, in his amazing childhood. I, I thought that was one of the best speeches tonight. Again, kudos to the Emmys for bringing back all these historic, iconic shows. Well done. Unfortunately, Martin Scorsese isn't here tonight, but that's not going to stop me from letting everyone in this room know that I would toss him around like a little Italian meatball. (laughs) Thank you for laughing at that. My writers wrote it. Oh, wow. Sunday night, the Critics' Choice Awards, hosted by Chelsea Handler. Poking a little fun at her ex, Joe Coy. That's, I knew exactly yeah, what that was right. when she said it, and it got huge laughs in the audience. She's an example of a comedian doing it well. She's suited for it, she's known enough, and she can be funny. Well, you know, interestingly enough, if people didn't know, she dated him for 11 months. And she said at one point, I really believed that that was my guy. I thought, oh my God, I won. Like, I got everything. I have my career. I have respect. I have my family. I have so many friends. I have all these things. And then I thought, this was going to be the person I spend my life with. And then towards the end of the relationship, it just became clear that this was not my person. All fairness, she's had her person about 85 times in the last six years. She... I mean, you know, I mean, everyone from rappers to comedians to, yeah. I do. uh, I do like her, though, when she she knows the pacing of hosting a show and she wasn't totally brutal. But, yeah, you know, no surprises on the Critics Choice Awards. You know, all the usuals won. The one big surprise, uh, Paul Giamatti, who I loved in The Holdovers, won Best Actor over Killian Murphy. And so what's going to help that rival? What's going to happen at the Oscars? We will see. I thought one of the funnier moments, did you see Robert Downey Jr.'s acceptance speech? Yeah, where he was dissing the critics. Yeah, he decided he was just going to quote critics that have, you know, bashed him over the years. Here's one. Sloppy, messy, and lazy. And then, like Pee Wee Herman emerging from a coma, it was actually somebody said about him, um, amusing as a bedlocked fart. So funny that he did that, like, you know. Yeah, thanks for the award, critics. Thanks for dissing me all year and then giving me an award. So funny. I would like to leave you with one last funny moment from Chelsea Handler's monologue. I mean, it was really good. Oh, funny running into all of you here tonight. I really love the third season of The Morning Show, especially when Jen's character um, had a fling with her soon-to-be boss. I also have a history of sleeping with my bosses. Shout out to Ted Harbert from the E! Network. <laughs> I mean. That's great. Just go there, baby. Julia Roberts has never done nudity. Thank you. But it's not because she feels responsible to set an example for other women. She says, quote, not to be criticizing others' choices, but for me, to not take off my clothes in a movie or be vulnerable in physical ways is a choice that I guess I make for myself. But in effect, I'm choosing not to do something as opposed to choosing to do something. So there you have it. Why is that a story? I guess because, you know, over the years when someone's had a long career and they're looking back at their career, she can say, I've never done nudity. Such a non-story. Barnes. Barnes is dissing my celebrity sleeves. Okay, we have a story. She comes out to say she didn't do nudity. Okay, where's the story? She doesn't do nudity. Okay. Okay. This story, I thought, I, I need your insight on this. How would you like to be the owner of a beautiful, yet not so gently used 2022 Range Rover owned by Kim Kardashian? No. Uh, Slight catch, it's pretty banged up. Yeah, it is now, uh, her mom put it on Carfax for $99,950. Well, if they just give it to charity, they have so much money. You need the money? Yeah, I know, that's just weird. According to the photos on Carfax, the vehicle's driver's side and the passenger side airbags are deployed... The mirrors are detached, and there's dents all over the place. Nice. Apparently, one of her staffers got into an accident. But I'm wondering, why would you put that on Carfax? Yeah, keep it classy. Do you really need the money? This story just super cracked me up. 
Have you seen the story about Joy Behar oh, on The View? So good. How does she make this comment about turning down a role on Ted Lasso? Maybe she thinks like us that no one listens to their podcast. But, um, wow. I mean, to put something like that out there that, according to the team, didn't... Let's go to her podcast. Yeah. Couldn't believe she dropped this little nugget. And it wasn't like a passing comment. I mean, this was like owning it. So you occasionally have acted in your career. You've worked yes. on... Uh, you've been in movies, yeah. movies I sitcoms. love. Sitcoms, yeah. Sitcoms. However, you were contacted about the uh, possibility to, oh, to be yeah. on my favorite show of all time. One of my favorite shows of all time. And you quickly dismissed it because... Ted Lasso. Ted it. Lasso. You were contacted to be on Ted Lasso to play the role, potentially, you were in the mix. The mother-in-law, wasn't it? His mother. His to mother. play Ted Lasso's mother. Yeah. You were dismissive of it because it would require you to spend your hiatus in London. It was too hot. It was Do you remember there was a heat wave going on at that time, like 100 degree weather? Yes. And I'd have to get on a plane and go in the middle of the heat? Yes. No, it's not my, I don't want, listen, I'm a writer. Yes. I write my own stuff. I don't care about other people's stuff. This is the. I mean, I don't need to be in everything. This I, is the hottest show on TV. This was the coolest show on television. It's not the hottest show on TV. It was TV. the hottest show on TV. It was. It is. It's over now. That was their executive producer, by the way. But why would you say that? Um, Barnes. The great part of this story is that it is news to the creators of the show, <laughs> Jason Sudeikis and Brendan Hunt. They were like, um, no, Joy Behar from The View. Respectfully, it would be news to us. Uh, we just work there. Wow. Seriously? How do you? She just thought no one would ever pay attention to you know raise her stock by dismissing the top show on TV for the last couple of years? Yeah. Uh, it's news to them. <laughs> well played. I need your take on this story. Explosive. ESPN has disciplined members of its staff who worked for years to secure Emmys for their on-air personnel who were not normally eligible for the award by using fake names and then Barnes entering them in all these different categories. There was a huge investigation that went on from The Athletic. They found that ESPN has... For, uh, for more than a decade, and this is how they got away with it for a decade, is just kind of freaking me out, inserting fake personnel names in entries to win more than 30 Emmys. They have robbed other people of Emmys. So bad. How do you do that? Really bad stuff. What a bad look, especially after, you know, basically extinguishing the big chunk of their stars from the network over the last year. And now this story comes out. And now, you know, they're sort of apologizing and disciplining these people. Yeah. Now, if you were someone who was a recipient of that award, how would you feel? Stupid. Yeah, I know. How do they think that they just, that, do they just show up like a little dude brings an Emmy over to their house? Here you go, I, man. You won an Emmy. Like, wouldn't you go check that out? I'd want to see it in print. Seriously shocked by that story. Um, I know that you were sort of in the backyard of the Chrisleys. Did you ever follow the story of Todd and Julie Chrisley? No, but I saw him at the courthouse one time when I went to get my driver's license up in Sandy Springs. <laughs> he looked very plastic. They Well, they filmed this in Georgia. I know. Chrisley knows best. And, of course, you know they're in prison yeah. for tax evasion. But they just sold their – well, they sold the mansion, and I guess it was sort of kept private. 13,279 square foot. In Brentwood. Wow. 5.2 million. They sold it in April. They bought it for like a little over 13 million. These dumpster fire reality shows that there are a few of them. How how do these people think they're going to get away with these things that they do while all this are they are they that much in a fantasy world that they think they can just get away with stuff? I think people also because people loved them because it was this, you know, this family oriented show. People were shocked when it happened. Ordered by a judge to pay $17.2 million in restitution for their crimes. They are still in jail. It's a crazy story. It's just so whack. That is your Celebrity Sleaze.